Okay, let's see here. Well, the footage is not the best, but that's what you get if you don't let me use your research cameras. So what I see is what you get. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Dr. Wilfred Meltzner, and I am here to welcome you to Abdira. I trust the transportation that we provided you was comfortable. Now, if you weren't, for any reason, invited by an Abdira associate, or if you have forgotten, for any reason, the brief introduction provided by the aforementioned associate, I will be providing a more detailed description of where you are and why you are here following this disclaimer. Abdira apologizes, but is not liable for any injuries that may have been inflicted during your escort, visit, and extraction. Any abnormal headaches or migraines you may be experiencing is likely a result of the sedative that was deemed necessary for your safe, secure, and quiet transportation. After this introduction and or the optional tour that follows, you may refuse our job offering and return to your previous occupation. Upon your refusal, you may be subject to an erasure and replacement of any memories linked to Abdira, its employees, and any other person, place, thing, or event that could, in theory, restore any and all suppressed, repressed, or removed memories surrounding this organization. As long as it is your first memory erasure by Abdira, no lasting side effects, including, but not limited to, erasure of non-targeted memories, minor to severe brain damage, development or curing of various mental illnesses, and slight to total personality shift, should occur. <laughs> this is a joke, right? Right? Wait, is this real? Abdira is a top-secret trans-dimensional scientific organization founded by the great Dr. Seth Anderson with the sole purpose of studying the fabric of reality. Our studies are primarily focused on understanding reality, what it's made of, and how it functions, with the intention of developing technologies that can prevent, stop, and or reverse fabric-damaging phenomena, whether their causes be natural or artificial. We have made great strides in our understanding of reality, and in this video, we will introduce you to the three foundational aspects of our work. The realitaic layers, the fabrical elements, and the machine that helped us find them all, the Astrolab Generator. To tell you about the realitaic layers is one of our Abdira associates and senior scientist, Mr. Albert Jekyll. Greetings, potential researchers and engineers. I, Mr. Jekyll, have the pleasure of telling you about the realitaic layers, the foundational inner workings of the fabric of reality. And I stress fabric, as reality really is like a fabric. These layers, as we call them, are really more like streams woven together to create the tapestry that is reality. Now, there are seven layers in total, four regular layers and two sub-layers and one meta-layer. The meta and the regular layers produce and or maintain aspects of reality without which we would enter into a state of entropy. While the behaviors of the two sub-layers oppose each other and keep the other five in balance. The first layer, the one meta-layer, is intervellum, the layer of form. The reason why we call this the meta-layer is because of all the regular layers bleed into it. Intervellum maintains matter's form. The layer is also where we all reside. If this layer was to be destroyed without directly killing us all, all matter would lose its form. The first regular layer is lucidus. This layer seems to be the origin of all electromagnetic energy. It is very bright and extremely hot. Mirror suits and eight layers of eclipse viewing glasses are required for expeditions. Even then, one cannot stay longer than five minutes. Most people regain sight after three weeks. Absolute zero and zero lumens await reality without the light layer. Next is a surprising discovery to say the least, the mechanical spectrum, that is, sound, is apparently sustained by its own dedicated layer, strepidus. It appears as a dark void almost indistinguishable from limbo. Sound waves visibly glow and ear protection is ineffective in this layer. However, ananium suits do provide some relief from the auditory assault. Speaking is not recommended and communication devices are confiscated before every expedition as all sounds are amplified. It is speculated that motion might cease if this layer were to no longer function. Either that or silence would fall regardless of vibration. Time to move on. <coughs> Aetis is the name of the layer of time. It is the only layer that does not seem to have a floor or gravity. The space itself is filled with an infinite nebulous cloud of temporal mist. Sometimes portals open up and flying steam locomotives can zip in and out of them, but that is a long story even I do not know. 
Spacesuits lined with anadium and tethers are required for any expeditions. Anti-time would destroy our concept of continuity if Aetis were removed. Non-linear anti-time, that is. Very different from linear anti-time. Vita is the last of the regular layers and seems to maintain life. It appears as a well-lit space completely entangled in glowing streams, like a giant web. Expeditions to Vita are rare as the potential for collateral damage is too great. No one can agree on exactly what would happen if this layer were to be eliminated. Some say death and life would not be so black and white. Others say we will all just die. Now for the two sub-layers, starting with Sadavel. This one acts as a seam that holds all the previous layers together. It appears like a tunnel of various radiation in constant rapid motion. The cosmic currents in there are too strong for any living thing to survive. We don't even have a vehicle that can safely traverse Sadavalum. For now. It has also been theorized that Sadavalum behaves like a loose thread, in that its constant motion might be slowly unraveling reality. Aside from Intervalum, it is the only layer that is not accessible via the astral. Finally, we have reached Limbo. This layer acts like a buffer, pushing the layers apart, keeping them from colliding. It appears as a black void with clouds of Vertertium drifting about. The layers pressed up against Limbo give its different corners their own haunting aspects and experiences as well. For example, those exploring Limbo's Lucidistrepidus zone will experience and encounter visual and auditory phantasms. There are many mysteries within- Due to a recent incident, information pertaining to Limbo is now on a need-to-know basis. On an unrelated note, all expeditions into Limbo are no longer required. We already know what's in there. We are in there. Now we are free. Uh, Mr. Jekyll, we're done. Huh? Oh, my apologies. Is everything all right? I have a meeting with the supervisors scheduled for next week. Oh my. What about, if I may ask? I do not know, and that's what concerns me. I swear, if this is about Thomas again. I never should have recruited that boy. Hey. Nicholas. Oh, uh, sorry. I... Mine's a little frazzled from the trip. <clears throat> Fabrical elements are unique materials and elements found in the realitaic layer. Uh, um, they could be um, made artificially or found naturally occurring in the universe or extracted from a crack in reality. A primary use is uh, for a key, key, key to open up doors in the layers via the astrolabe. Ananium is Intervallium's fabrical element. Um, it's pure, light blue metallic substance with extreme durability. Pure Ananium uh, acts as a perfect insulator for fabrical energies as they seemingly vanish within its metal-like structure. Uh, primary uses for Ananium could be for hazmat suits or the rings for the astrolabe. Uh, ananium has a naturally occurring state, also known as a void steel, vanta black in appearance, and will implode in a short-lived vortex if uh, ignited too quickly, <laughs> which makes it incredibly dangerous to purify. <clears throat> Luminium crystals uh, found uh, naturally in Lucidus are uh, glass-like crystals that shine incredibly bright and you can uh, mix them with glass to dim luminium's grow, but um, they are primarily used to enhance any light passing through them. This quality makes it crucial for constructing a also known as the a I personally attached to a experimental robot named uh, Anyway, Sonic radiation, as it already says, um, is uh, basically what it says on the tin. Otherwise, being um, very hard to collect, it's basically just sonic waves with radiation, allowing it to tr uh, travel uh, through a vacuum. Now, 
if we did find a way to uh, contain and manipulate this, uh, it would be easier, but we usually leave that to a mostly regulated singular facility. Some, some, some. Ah, temporal mist. This one's fun. It um, basically looks like a, a glowy mist, and it emanates a general temporal energy. A prolonged exposure to minute uh, quantities can um, greatly slow the effects of um, if used correctly, you could, uh, or perhaps, don't believe me? Well, there's a whole atenvia, or as some of us like to call it, lifelines are, um, glowing strings that are woven together in the mists of via. Uh, they have a sense of life in, uh, maintain life in, um, uh, reality. Why do we think this? Uh, well, on an expedition, uh, somebody tripped and destroyed a whole load of Atenvia, and we got reports later of multiple strings of deaths in multiple universes. Well, uh, let's say that the man didn't fully recover mentally from that. But uh, a rumor has it that there is a, a, a girl of sorts that is down there. Well, we've heard of Inanium and Void Steel, but now let's bring it over to our other dual element, uh, Varus stars and their corresponding radiation. Um, Varus stars are gemstones that surge with, you guessed it, Varus radiation. Wait, uh, wouldn't that make them some sort of quartz? <laughs> uh, never mind. Um, uh, Ferris radiation is the real kicker here, a uh, sort of parasitic energy as it tries to infect and uh, convert other energies onto itself, going all the way down until the source. Uh, small amounts of Ferris radiation uh, can act as an EMP that discriminately disables machines and some forms of life. Um, but large amounts of Ferris radiation can result in creeping paralysis or Death, or a uh, total uh, shutdown if you're, uh, if you're a machine. However, uh, a localized amount of ferrous radiation can ignite its antivalum and bring its cosmic currents into intervalum. <laughs> um, ferrous uh, radiation um, can be used as a cataclyst in uh, many devices and machines that involve Fabrical elements. Uh, now, ah, Ved Septium. Uh, this one's really weird. I mean, really weird. It's kind of like a, a black cloud on um, at sunset, but it's a type of um, matter to deprive. All experimentation with Ferret Ceridium is currently halted, and every sample has been recalled back to Abdera HQ. If you find anyone in possession of Ferret Ceridium, you are to report it immediately. Anyone caught with, or with unreported knowledge of someone with, Ferret Ceridium will be immediately taken in for interrogation, brain scan, and subsequent dismissal from Abdera. Rules, despite your efforts, our loyal servants still free. Septium and Varus radiation violently explode when they come into contact with another. <laughs> well, um, I think my work here is done. I do hope you enjoy editing, uh, Meltzner. I need to get back to building the new astral app. I think you're the only one besides Thomas who seems to be happy working on that thing. Uh, well, uh, don't tell the young Emerson, but I think there's something truly special going to happen the final test next week. Dr. Lori, are you alright? Of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? Sorry, you're just not the first one to be staring into space today and And I... what? Am I not allowed to stare off into space and be alright? Would you like me to get a psychiatric evaluation to confirm what I'm telling you? No, no, no. Look, I'm just trying to get this done so I can- And you're trying to get this done is interfering with my ability to get some real work done. Hey. The sooner you do this, the sooner you can get back to your real work. Why can't the professor do this? I mean, he knows more about the Astrolab than I do. He redesigned the darn thing. 
The supervisors already assigned him to a small disclaimer at the beginning of the video. <laughs> a disclaimer? He should be the last one giving a disclaimer. I mean, he barely listens to instructions as it is. Well, I did suggest that you and he switch roles, but they told me he was too busy. I didn't feel like pushing it further. Well, you should have pushed it. He barely has any time for his precious Mark II anymore. I mean, what on earth has got him so busy? I don't know, but the supervisors think it's important, and do you know what else they think is important? Fine. Fine. The great and magnificent Astrolab was built and designed Dr. The... Lori! What? Would you please be professional with this? That way you can get back to your important work without further interruptions from me or the supervisors. Fine. Fine. <clears throat> the Abdira Science Twin Ring Realitaic Layer Access Point Generator, or Astrolap, is a machine that uses centrifugal forces created by the opposing rotations of twin and anium rings and fabrical elements to open portals to the realitaic layers. The founder and CEO of Abdira, Dr. Seth Anderson, invented the Astrolab to test the effects of intense, focused gravitational fields on the fabric of reality. Eventually, they threw a chunk of inanium in it, and it shattered into a thousand pieces, which then turned the rings into a million pieces, which then shredded the room and the room next to it. When they rebuilt the facility, they beamed high-intensity light into the rings, opening a portal to the first identified layer, Lucidus. For years, we used the same design for the Astrolab, two rings cradled in a pair of tires each. Recently, that wasn't enough for one Thomas Emerson. Dr. Lori. After getting the first demotion in Abdira history for reckless, accidental rewriting of history, he was forced to only operate the Astrolab. Then when people got too scared to use the thing after a mysterious incident, he got bored and redesigned the whole thing to be safer and more efficient. Dr. Lori. Please, he only came up with the thing just to get his position back, like a redesign would fix what the anti-clock did in my family history. They worship that piece of garbage. Ingrid. And then he doesn't even participate in the work he started. He just comes in every now and then to remind us how to do our job. They even had to get someone from another universe to help me. Ingrid. Oh, don't even get me started on his daydreaming. Dr. Ingrid Lori. What? You started ranting. I'm afraid you're going to have to start over. You know what? I won't. What? You heard me. You've wasted enough of my time on this silly video project that the supervisor stuck on you. But they're the ones who are going to want to retake. Well, then they can get the professor. I'm sure he has plenty of time. I, however, do not. Come on, just one more quick take? You want a quick take? Well, here you go. You should have stuck to research, smelt nerd. See ya. <clears throat> Thank you, my fellow researchers and associates, for your time and input. And thank you, new recruits, for your time. I hope you found this video educational, informational, and convincing. All of us here at Abdira hope you will choose to join us. Again, thank you, and have a great... Uh, oh, uh, Supervisor Thecla, I'm surprised to see you. I was just recording the intro and outro to that video you told me to make. Good. I'd like to see a draft of it before the meeting next week. However, I hope that you haven't yet recorded the others. There are some changes that need to be made concerning information about Limbo and Ferret Serkium. Oh? Uh, why, if I may ask? Well, you may ask, but I can't give you much more information than what we've already disclosed. Do you remember the incident about ten years ago? The one where a whole facility caved in due to an enthusiastic police officer who shot out a tire on an active astrolab? Enthusiastic is the right word, but not in the way you're meaning. His enthusiasm led him into the woods in search of missing persons. There, he found an Abdira facility overrun by dimension-hopping murderers. Dimension-hopping murderers? How did that even happen? Where did they even come from? We don't know the answer to either of those two questions, although we do have some theories None of which am I able to disclose. Okay. But what does that have to do with this video? See, at the time of the collapse, the Astrolab was set to limbo. Meaning that anyone could have survived simply by falling into the portal. <laughs> but that was ten years ago. Don't you think that- DON'T underestimate the power of Fertzertium.
need to halt any curiosity by making all information about limbo and ferzertium need to know only. Then we can fill in any holes to appease the masses. Well, I already recorded the others. Then get them back in here. <sighs> well, I, I should be able to get Mr. Jekyll back. But Nicholas and Dr. Laurie are going to be a bit difficult. I already had a hard enough time getting Nicholas in here, given the fact that the Astrolab Mark II is scheduled to be done by next week. And Dr. Laurie is all but ready to spend the night building her own assistance to help her finish on time. She can be a bit extreme. We'll have to talk to her about that. For now, I'll just record some messages that we can play over the sensitive information. It'll be faster that way anyways. The mention of the murderers, how great, will owe so much more than that. Ignorance may be bliss, after, but real violence kills more cats than curiosity. And to the humans known as Thomas Emerson, Ingrid Lord, and Albert Jekyll, you may have escaped all our clutches, but chase after us! You surely need to realize the hands of Regnum Metalus. And we, that ship will take the utmost pleasure in feasting on your life force. Emerson, you have been warned.